And I'm going to turn it over to Abby. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing tonight? You can answer in the chat box if you want, or you can just ignore it. That's up to you. But I do have some questions for you. And I think I'm just going to ask you to. Oh, good, good. Looks like everybody's doing good. Good. So, Thank you for answering me. <laughs> even even if it's just you and me talking right now, Abby, I don't know about you and I don't know about our participants. I get a little zoomed out, especially at the end of the day. And I can appreciate being in a place where I don't want the camera on. Watching this chat pod, though, and knowing that they're listening to us and still interacting. Thank you, guys and gals and folks. Thank you. Agreed. It's nice to know I'm not just shouting into a void. Um. Does everybody know how to use the reactions button at the bottom? If you move your mouse over the keyboard, I mean, over the, I guess it's kind of like a task bar. There's the smiley face with the plus buttons that says reactions. All right. So um, I have a couple questions I'm going to ask you. And for this first one, I would like you to use those reactions if you can. So my question for you is, have you started your research paper? If you can give me a thumbs up if you've started your research paper. If you don't have access to those reactions, you can just type something in the chat to let me know that you've started. Also, oh, I see one no. <laughs> Thank you. There is no um, there's there's no ramifications if you haven't started. I, I'm just trying to get a, an idea of where we all are at. Um, so I, I could speak for myself here. If I were writing a research paper, I would not have started it either. I take deadlines very seriously, and I like to wait until the deadline. <laughs> um, not before, not a moment before. Okay. Um, Vivek says, I've done about 80% of the questions, but have not actually started writing. All right, that's good. Um, anyone else, um, you know, since, By since we're Byron, there? Byron says, I've started. Um, and <laughs> Navleen uh, has just finished uh, the research. Okay, so I think that your task for leading up to tonight's meeting was just to finish those questions. So, Give me a little wave or raise your hand if you have not finished those questions yet, just so we can see where we're all at. You can be honest again. It's just it's just for us. All right. All right. So we've got three. Um, I'm going to assume that you're just busy, but if there is a reason that you haven't started, uh, I mean, that you haven't finished um, answering those questions and you need some help from someone, feel free to reach out. Um, you can hit Matt or I up in the chat if you need something, or hopefully everybody has connected with their mentors. Um, I know if I'm your mentor, I have not connected with you. Unfortunately, I was sick this weekend. I thought that I would be in better shape than I was. I didn't get to it. I will review and answer everyone tonight and tomorrow. Okay, next question. This one is in the chat box. So in the chat box, regardless of whether you've finished your questions or started your paper, how confident are you on a scale from one to 10 that you've got this? Um, so one would be like, you're not confident at all, you're struggling, you need some help. And 10 would be, I've got this, I'm not worried, it's going to be great. So from one to 10, how confident are you? You want me to read these aloud to you, Abby? Sure. Wow, they're, fight they're typing fast. Let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> Ann says six, Sid is an eight, Adriana seven-ish, I appreciate that. Uh, Nana is a seven. Sammy is, I believe, also a seven. Naveline is an eight. Ariana is a seven. Christina, six. Christina, a seven. Byron's an 8.5. That's the confidence <laughs> there. Vivek is a 7.5. Gianna is an eight. Raj is an eight. Anyone right. we missed? So everybody's on the upper side of confident. Nobody less than a six, right? Unless right. they didn't write anything in. And if they didn't write anything in, then whew, it's okay, though. It's okay. <laughs> All right, good. Um, and then um, 
for this one, I'm guessing since we didn't have anybody indicate one through five on the last question, raise your hand if you need help, if you feel lost, if you need a little nudge, or if you have something that you want to talk through with us. Not to put you on the spot, but that's what we're here for. I'm going to give you like 10 more seconds. And as they're thinking through that, Abby, as you've underscored, and, and I hope that we've all shared, we're here to support you. If you're on here tonight, it, it speaks volumes to Abby and I and Marissa, who's not with us tonight. We, we appreciate and we respect just how much you all have going on right now and, and that you're making the effort and the time and the commitment to, to be a part of this program it says a lot to us and we want to support you. We want to help you through this. Um, so please, please, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do to help. Yes, I second all of that. Um, so my last question is, is there anyone here who has not heard from their mentor? If you wanna raise your hand, that way we can make sure that we've got your email address right, that um, check in with your mentor. They may not have seen the email where we were telling them to reach out to you. So if you haven't heard from your mentor, unless I'm your mentor, um, I know I have three of you. <laughs> or, or me, or me. Oh, Matt, did you not reach out either? I, I um, have been in contact with a couple of my mentees, but I know that I have more than those that I've reached out to. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. So, um, since nobody is, nobody's throwing us under the bus here, <laughs> we will just check in with your mentors tonight or tomorrow and make sure that everybody is, uh, is ready to roll. So, all right. That being said, tonight we are going to, um, first we're going to go through and uh, you guys are going to let us know your country, um, the issue that you're raising and like a sneak peek into your preview, really like just a sentence, nothing more, um, just to see where everybody's at and uh, to see if there's anybody in here like working that could work together or, you know, just to satisfy my curiosity too. So I'm gonna go through um, and just call you out as I see you on the screen. And if you can let us know your country, your issue and your possible solution. So, and here's the thing also, um, you guys still have this whole week and all of next week to finish your papers. So if you don't necessarily, if you've identified your country and your topic, but you haven't necessarily come up with your solution, that's fine. Um, and also, if you wind up changing your mind in the next week or two, as you do more research, as you get, gain a better understanding of, the, of uh, the issues and solutions that have been tried before, that's fine too. Don't feel like what you say tonight or what you do or don't have down on the paper tonight is the end all and be all. You have plenty of time to change your mind. Um, okay, so first on my screen is Navleen. Can you share with us? Uh, sure. So my country is India. My topic is education, and I'm specifically focusing on gender discrimination and how that's impacting the population there. Very cool. Do you have any solutions yet? Um, well, I'm still brainstorming those. That's fine. No problem. <laughs> that's an interesting topic. <laughs> I would love to hear more. Um, okay, next is Sammy. Sammy, are you there? Um, yeah, uh, my country is uh, Uzbekistan and my topic is dietary diseases. And uh, I brainstormed like kind of, I kind of brainstormed like two different solutions, but I'm trying to find a way to like put them together. So one of them is uh, to propose an educational plan, uh, which um, teaches students in schools about um, healthy diets and, my other solution was to um, build gardens to pr for fresh, fresh produce in villages. So um, I'm just trying to figure out a way to put them both together right now. Very cool. Sounds a lot like what we do, right, Matt? Um, community gardens and like they call them outdoor classrooms here. That 
that might be something that would help you tie together the education and the, the gardening. All right, next I have Raj. Also, if I'm butchering your name, please tell me. All right, uh, my, top, uh, my country is India. Uh, my topic is water scarcity. And so what I'm doing, my solution that I've suggested is the, since it's like a smaller, less developed nation working with a more developed nation to like increase exports of specific products and then in turn receive more needed products such as water. Cool. Very cool. All right, next I have Gianna. Um, my country is Brazil and my topic is sustainable agriculture. And the problem there is cattle farming is destroying the Amazon forest. And my uh, solution right now is plant-based meat factories, which would give people jobs and is better for the environment. Pretty cool. Awesome. All right, next I have Vivek. Oh, also before Vivek goes, if you if you have a question for one of the other presenters, feel free to raise your hand. Um, I don't know, I would love to hear some dialogue. And I, as I hope you've all gotten a sense by now, even though I'm doing it right now, I hate interrupting people, but I also wanna make sure everyone has a voice. And so to that, point what Abby just said right there feel free to write something in the chat and without rudely interrupting anyone I will make sure everyone gets heard and so actually to that point Sid right wrote um that's a great topic unfortunately Sid I didn't see when you wrote that so I don't know I think all three of them are great topics so far so okay. hopefully that can apply to all three hi Sid, Sid here hi sorry oh. yeah that I wrote that actually for Navleen uh because that was the first the first uh, topic I I got to hear, but uh, so far these are really, really good. So I'm really impressed with everyone. Um, also, I don't know, I did jump in kind of late to this meeting if I just wanted to introduce myself real quick. I'm a, I'm Sidra, Sid, you can call me. Um, I'm a work study student. Um, I work with Marissa. I don't know, you You all probably, everyone's, everyone knows Marissa. Um, but yeah, so I work for the Rutgers Cooperative Extension, part of 4-H. Uh, so I, I'm, a, I'm a student at Rutgers. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, we're excited to have you. Okay, sorry Vivek, you are up. Okay, uh, my country is India and uh, my topic is renewable energy. I haven't really confirmed any potential solutions yet, but I have an idea of one. Uh, the, um, I was thinking maybe the government paying people in villages to set up solar panels, that way the environment benefits. And since there are a lot of people who are uh, poor in India, they will also benefit economically. The only issue I can see with that is that the government might not have enough money. It's interesting. And Vivek, we're, we're, you know, we're just sharing with everyone right now. It's like a kind of a share fair of what countries we're doing and our potential, well, problems and then solutions to those problems. Um, if anyone that's listening has any ideas, like Abby said earlier, you wanna chime in, that's great. And then also too, Vivek, don't be discouraged. If you don't have the idea yet, um, you, you have your mentor, you can hash some of those ideas out with your mentor. And like I just said, if anyone on here has any ideas, um, please feel free, use the chat feature or um, have that confidence to unmute yourself and uh, talk in real time. Yeah, so like I said, um, that's not confirmed. I was just brainstorming, like, this is one potential idea. It, that, I, I, I'm at a loss of words because that's so awesome. I, <laughs> I, I love, I, I can hear your your confidence in your voice and, and that you're not, um, how do I want to say this? You're flexible with your uh, opinions. Like you are going to be fine. You're adaptable and you're willing to change. I like that, Vivek. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. All right, next we have Nina. Hi, Nina here. Um, my country is Madagascar and my topic is malnutrition, specifically child and maternal malnutrition. Um, for my solution, I'm probably going to do something about healthcare. Uh, I'm going to probably have to narrow that down more, but something related to that. All right, cool. And thank you for correcting me on your name. Um, Next, Christina M. 
Hi, um, I did South Sudan and I am, my topic is malnutrition. Um, and currently there are about like 80% of the South Sudan population uh, spends, has a dollar for their feed. So I'm working on solutions for that. Probably gonna do some different farming techniques because they're still like an undeveloped country. You said they spend a dollar for their food? Um, yeah. Is that like weekly? That's how much they have. Like over 80% of the population only has a dollar to spend on food. And um, they're like the third fragile country in Africa. All right. Cool. Um, next, I have Anne. Hi. Um, so my topic is water scarcity in Yemen. And my proposed solution is kind of moving water resources from cot to other sustainable agriculture. From what to other? I missed what you said. Oh, cot. It's kind of like, um, it's, uh, it's similar to tobacco. And oh, it's- Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, next we have Byron. Oh, um, my country is Libya, and um, I'm doing my paper on sustainable agriculture, which is something that I've been struggling with for about 11 years now. So, yeah, I haven't come up with any um, solutions yet, but I'm still working on them. That's fine. We are confident that you will find a solution. <laughs> uh, next, we have Adriana. I chose Tonga, and my topic is water scarcity. And... I'm pretty sure my solution is going to involve like solar panels and to filter the water and get more water to the country. Cool. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. So it looks like Anne also used or chose water scarcity as her issue. So I don't know, maybe you two want to connect. <laughs> um, Adriana, I lost my spot. Here we go, Christine. My country is India, and um, the topic that I was originally interested in was malnutrition. But as I did more research, I realized that water scarcity was more of a bigger issue, so I switched to that. But now on here, I know that someone else is doing that same exact topic, so I don't know if that's possible, if we can both do the same topic. Um, yes, I think so. Um, because you won't necessarily be presenting um, to the same judge and you will be presenting with a lot of other kids from all over New Jersey who very well may have chosen that exact country and that same topic. topic. So it's, it's not a problem at all. As long as you guys don't hand in like the same paper. <laughs> yeah, I had, um, I was thinking about different solutions. But the one that they mentioned was really good. I didn't even think of that one. <laughs> and um, Abby, before we go any further, Christine, what you shared earlier too, in addition to maybe having the same topic as someone else, not a problem at all. But I love your point that as you've done your research, you're coming to different conclusions. And in many ways, that's kind of the whole point of why we're here is that something that we may at the beginning think is so obvious and so simple, as we start to delve into it, we start to discover maybe it's, either A, not so simple as we once thought it was, but also maybe there are other ideas that we hadn't even thought of originally. And I think that you'll find as you start to develop your research and your project, those, I call them the eureka moments. So like, whoa, try and remember those, write those down, document that because your judges will take note of that. And they're gonna be pretty impressed by that too because you may be sharing something with them that they didn't even think of either. That is very true. All right, next I have Ariana. Um, my country was Nigeria and my topic was sustainable agriculture. Um, and the problem is uh, climate change is causing poor soil for farming. And so my solution is hydroponics. Very cool. All right, next we have Sid. So I'm doing a uh, Venezuela and um, main topic I'm focusing on is government 
And an interesting fact, I was, I, I saw this video while I was doing my research and basically in this video, um, a lot of the citizens of Venezuela, I mean, they suffer from a lot of malnutrition. So, so they can't even fit in their like pants anymore because they've lost so much weight. Yeah. Hmm. That's sad. I mean, a lot of this is sad, but um, it's, it's important, I think, too, sometimes when we're doing our research, and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more later, actually, to have that like little personal connection or personal story, even though our paper overall should focus on the research. But like when you when you add like an everyday detail like that, it can really like pull at the heartstrings. Okay, so before we move on, any questions or discussion or something you wanna share about your topic or help you need with the topic, anything at all, anyone? Matt, do you have anything to add or, or Sidra, Sid? I, um, you, you're all probably sick of hearing my voice right now or at this point, but um, these all sound really cool. Like, uh, this isn't the first year I've done this, either uh, working with Abby and Marissa or also being a judge, but I'm speaking very honestly, uh, this is the year I'm the most excited to read some of these papers because each of you have identified such, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The, 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 the problems that you've identified, all of you right now are working with through some really, I think, interesting solutions. So uh, I look forward to reading through some of these and, and uh, getting to know uh, your thought process better. And I could be wrong, but it sounds like a lot of you have real enthusiasm and like genuine concern. So like, I'm excited to see this all play through to the end because um, I feel like you're invested in this and it's exciting to watch. Uh, yeah, I, I to jump in, I, I also have to agree. Um, uh, uh, this is my uh, second World Food Prize that I, I've been a part of. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm kind of more well versed in like what's going on, what's happening, what kind of topics people really talk about. And these are these sound you guys are picking some really advanced topics, some really like um, educate educated solutions to these kinds of things. So I'm really impressed, honestly. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading these papers. Before uh, before uh, uh, we go any further, I've said this I think every meeting, and I'm going to say it again tonight. Don't give up. Um, it, it, it's you're about to get to a part that it's going to be really easy to give up because there's going to be some work ahead of you here. But I encourage each and every single one of you that's on here tonight, don't give up. Uh, uh, um, you, you got this. And as, as a mentor to some of you, and I know Abby and Sid and, and any of the other mentors would back me up on this, we are here to support you. So if you feel like you hit that wall or you just feel like this is too much, um, stick with it. Reach out to your mentors. We want you to succeed. We want to support you. And based on all the evidence here tonight, I feel very confident saying that um, you can you will all be in a position where you can present this and do just fine. We're not just here to make sure that you're doing your homework. Like we really are here to help you. So if you get stuck on a question, if you if you get stuck on like, you know, a, a part of your paper, you're just not sure if you want us to proofread it every day up until, I mean, we might be like, really? But we'll do it. <laughs> Anything we can do to help you, talk you through something, help you identify some resources that you can use. Um, if you're having trouble finding resources, reach out. That's what we're here for. Um, and even if if you present to me a question that I don't I don't know how to help you with, I have no problem reaching out to one of the other mentors to say like, hey, what, what are your thoughts on this? So like, really, we are a team of people here to help you. Don't feel shy about reaching out. And, and you know, really, like, like Matt said, don't give up. We got this. Most of you feel at least moderately confident. We, Matt and I feel like 100% confident. We got this. <laughs> All right, so that being said, I am going to start sharing my screen. I have a very brief, very bare bones, very unformatted PowerPoint to share with you guys. <laughs> Hopefully it works. So tonight, am I up? 
Can you see it? No. How about now? It says yes, yes. Yes, yes? okay. So here we go. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about writing your papers, the resources, formatting, and citations that will go into your papers. So we should have just completed steps four to five-ish, right? You guys chose your country, you researched the family, you selected the topic, you're analyzing its impact on food security, and you're starting to explore and propose solutions. So that's good. There are just two more steps to go. We're almost there. As, as Matt and I have kind of indicated, we recognize that step six is probably the most daunting, but I think we can get through this together. So I also, I'm going to send you guys um, this PowerPoint at the end. Really, that's the only reason I created the PowerPoint so that I would be able to send it to you and you could use the links yourselves. Okay, so additional resources. Now these resources have come directly from the World Food Prize people. So um, the first one is worldfoodprize.org backslash resources. And these are credible resources that have been vetted by the World Food Prize staff. And um, basically it's a Pinterest page. So when you go to it, you can look at all the different boards. So they will have resources for you for topics or solutions for uh, different countries. They even have boards dedicated to formatting style. So I know like not everybody uses Pinterest, but it's a really useful um, resource. And I think you can even log in using either Facebook or your uh, Google password. So you don't even have to really create an account to use it. Um, and again, they're all vetted by the World Food Prize staff. So you'll know like you don't have to really worry, is this credible? Do I have to double, triple check? So that could be helpful. The next one is the Food Security Index. And this has a lot of data on countries. So, and I think they said that it's divided by countries. So you should just be able to go there, look up your country and look up the stats that you need. Um, the next one is, I can't say it, museum, like museum, but museum.org. And they can help you identify credible sources. And then the last one is owl.purdue.edu and they can help you with your um, formatting style. So whether you choose MLA or APA, there's resources there to help you figure out um, or to make you help you make sure that you're doing it right. So that said, there's a lot of discussion around identifying credible sources on the World Food Prize page. So they recommend this um, handy dandy acronym, ESCAPE, to help you um, check through your resources. So one of the things that they mentioned was Wikipedia. Do we count Wikipedia as a credible resource or a credible source? And the answer is no, because anybody can go into Wikipedia and change the, um, or change or add um, the content. So Wikipedia is a great jumping off point, but you would have to um, go through the sources there and find the actual source or the original source of the data. So in ESCAPE, the E stands for evidence. Do the facts hold up? How can you verify if it's accurate information? So you can look for the names, the authors, the statistics that they use, the locations, and the quotes, and try to find them in other sources. So if you can find the same information in a couple of spots, then chances are it's credible. So for this, you want to make sure you're choosing evidence over emotion. Um, can you find the original source of the data, the original author? And once you find that source, is it used within context or within the correct context? The second letter is S for source. Who made this and can you trust them? Is it unbiased? Who funded the research? Are they uh, credible or an expert or is it a hobbyist with the blog? So recently I came across some information that I thought was like really great and useful. And I wanted to recommend it to a colleague who was doing um, 
a presentation on it, but I couldn't find the original source. All I could find was a post made by an influencer on Instagram. And that was it. Like I hit a dead end. So I did not center that information because I thought, well, if this isn't true, if this isn't real, I don't want to be the one spreading around false information. So that's something that you want to take into consideration. Is it a newspaper? Is it a blog? Is it, you know, a, a, a kind of out there a discredited news source? Um, especially when you're doing a scientific based research paper, you want to make sure that it's credible that the source itself is credible, I mean. So the context, what's the big picture? Consider if this is the whole story and uh, weigh other forces surrounding it. So current events or cultural trends, political goals, financial pressures, you know, like the, the question above asks who funded the research. So what is the context that your data is being used in here? Um, audience, who is the intended audience? What is their expertise. Look for attempts to appeal to specific groups or types of people. Um, the image choices, the presentation techniques, the language, the content. So if you are quoting um, an article that you found, it's talking about water scarcity, but the, um, the company that is cited in here is um, looking to profit off of it. And this isn't it is, this isn't a scientific journal, it's a business, it's a business um, article or a business magazine. You want to like make sure that there aren't like conf conflicts of interest and that the audience makes sense. Um, the purpose, why was this made? Look for clues to the motivation, the publisher's mission, persuasive language or images, money-making tactics, uh, stated or unstated agendas calls to action. So that kind of ties into the audience one also. Um, what, what was the purpose for the article that you're reading? And then the execution. How is this information presented? Consider how the way it's made affects the impact. Style, grammar, tone, image choices, placement, and layout. That makes me think of those uh, emails that we all get from like the princes who want to give us their fortune, but we just have to send them all of our money first and they're riddled with spelling errors. And so that's a big tip off that it's not real. And so you want to, um, you want to look at these kinds of things too. So is it written in a scholarly evidence based statistical way, or is it a blog and it's like heavily based on feelings? So, that is the escape method for determining if your sources are credible. So now we're going to look at quickly. Um, does anybody so have any questions? Yeah. Can I jump in just real quick? I'm sorry. And this, um, th that was awesome, Abby. Thank you for putting that together. Um, you may find when you do your evidence that the evidence doesn't support your claim. And, and that, it's disheartening and it's not a fun feeling, but the evidence doesn't lie either. If you're doing everything that Abby had on the screen right there, like I love ice cream. Oh my gosh. I would love to be able to eat ice cream every day, every meal of every day of the week. And I would love to be able to find that editorial that says that ice cream is healthy but an editorial doesn't meet the standards of what Abby just shared right there. I would love to be able to find the evidence that says that ice cream is healthy for you, but there's no evidence there. So um, if that's the case, then you either A, have to um, change your position or change your, your solution, or um, uh, I don't know, just uh, uh, come up with a new idea. Um, but if you're doing everything that Abby had on the screen right there, the, the escape method, um, you're going to do just fine. Yeah, so um, to Matt's point, let's say you do come across an editorial that supports your, your uh, hypothesis or your proposed solution. You can research the people writing it. Hopefully they've cited some sources and that might lead you to something that would lend you the support that you need for that source to be credible. But in the end, you do have to make sure that your sources are credible, um, like I said, in the end. 
I feel really disoriented because I can't see anything except for my own screen and I don't understand why. So please excuse me. <laughs> well, and, and I've got your back, Abby. I'm watching the ones written in the chat and I don't see any hands. For, it's know, just so right. weird. Like usually I can still see some faces in the corner, but this time I can't. Zoom so like bear it. with me as I sit over here awkwardly talking to myself. <laughs> so format requirements. Um, Regardless of what formatting style you go with, um, this paper requires that you follow the, the following format requirements. So everybody should have one inch page margins all the way around, 11 point font times New Roman, single space text, no indentation, double space between paragraphs, and then they, they give you this um, and this is all right from your from your um, your handbook or your I forget what it's called your youth guide. So you should have this information on your own anyway. I just wanted to review it with you in case you haven't started your paper. I don't know as a pro, as a procrastinator, sometimes just setting it up is like the little kick in the pants I need to get started. So I'm presenting you with this information in case you haven't gotten this far yet. Um, and also, because if you have started, but you didn't follow these um, guidelines yet, I want to make sure that everybody does this right. Um, and then there's a little note here that says that your paper will be checked for plagiarism. So we're talking about finding reliable sources and vetting those sources. And uh, we want to make sure that you properly cite them so that it doesn't come up um, as a flag that you have been plagiarizing. And then, of course, they give you more resources. Um, at their site for those for citing and references. But um, here's how they recommend you break down your paper. Your paper should be three to five pages in length with a word count of 1500 to 2000 words. And that does not include the bibliography. So that is separate. Um, so they recommend 5% should be on the introduction and that's 75 to 100 words. 20% should be country and family. So that's 300 to 400 words. 20% should be challenge and impact, 300 to 400 words. 50% should be your solutions and recommendations. And that's um, 750 to 1,000 words. That's half of your paper. And then 5% should be the, the conclusion, 75 to 100 words. Um, again, I like to break things down into small manageable steps. So um, if you even just start with your introduction, you know you have 75 to 100 words, one paragraph. Um, so I like to break it down like that for myself to make things easier and you know to break it down into smaller steps. So hopefully that helps someone. Um, and they recommend from the World Food Prize to check out easybib.com or citationmachine.com or the Purdue Writing Lab at owl.english.purdue.edu.owl. And uh, then they also um, remind us that we should include at least five sources with in-text citations using the standard sets, standards set by the MLA or the APA. So they're not telling us which style we have to use, just to choose one style and use it consistently. So if there's one that you're most comfortable with, definitely use that one. Just remember to stick to one style and use that style throughout your paper. So cite your sources. As they mentioned, you should include in text citations and a bibliography at the end, include a minimum of five sources, choose one style and be consistent, and do not just copy and paste. They uh, want you to use sources, obviously, and cite information in your paper, but they want you to write it out in your own voice and to avoid overusing quotes. This will help to connect your data to your solutions and will increase the fluidity of your paper. Any questions about this so far? Okay. So there are key differences in the APA and the MLA format. Um, I'm going to assume that everybody has some experience with using one or the other or both, but this kind of breaks it down for you. So how do you cite one author 
in, in each format, two authors or more authors, three or more authors. And so, like I said, I'm really just writing this out so that I can send it to you and you can have it for reference. And then in the APA and the MLA, there are key differences in your work cited list. So here you can see Smith comma T, then the year in parentheses, the, um, the work that you're citing, the edition. And then um, in this one, so this one is API. And then in this one, they show you how to write that same information in the MLA. And at the bottom, they show you the in-text citation. So hopefully that's helpful, but I think this is my next slide. So um, I was talking to a PhD student at Rutgers and he told me that these are the three most popular, as far as he knows, the three or the three most commonly used that he's familiar with um, websites where you can um, manage your references. So Zotero.org, Scribber.com, or Mendeley.com. Mendeley, I don't know how you say that one. And he said that they are all free and they will, um, you put in your information and it will create the citations and the bibliography text for you. Um, so that makes it really easy and you don't necessarily have to do all the work of remembering which, which piece of information comes next and does it get, you know, parentheses or whatever. So hopefully this helps. So do you need help? Reach out to your mentor or to Matt or Marissa or myself. And I included my email address there because I don't know their email addresses off the top of my head. Um, but any questions? I'm going to stop sharing my screen if I can find my way back. I'm stuck. And I just put my email in the chat, even though I think at this point, all of you have our email addresses through um, like the reminder that Marissa sent out last night. It, we're not difficult to find, um, but as Abby shared, reach out to any one of us, reach out to your mentor. We want you to succeed. We, we I mean, before we even got to know you, we wanted you to succeed, but having gotten to know you over the last, what is it now, three weeks, three, four weeks, um, we really want each and every single one of you to do well with this. Agreed. Okay, no questions. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so your homework for next week is if you have not finished doing your research to finish your research and to start working on your paper. Um, so you should have a first draft ready for, or at least at the very least a first draft ready for next Monday because your papers will be due next Friday. So you have a week to pull together your first draft and um, send it to your mentors. Matt looks like he has something to say. So I'm well, going to pause. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt your train of thought there, Abby, but um, it, it, it's, I'm sitting here and I'm just, I'm trying to coalesce some of my thoughts. I, I was thinking through everything that you shared tonight, which was so awesome. Um, you're all being presented right now an opportunity to, to, I mean, I'm gonna save the world. Um, you have all identified problems at this point and you're identifying solutions. And now what you're doing is you're putting those together. You're, you're, you're putting those together in a paper. And if you follow through with it, you will then be presented an opportunity to share this with experts. And experts are going to share with you. And we're talking, some of them are, are as Abby mentioned, PhD candidates. Some of them are already PhD. Some of them are university professors. And they're going to give you real-time feedback, okay? But then you may potentially be able to take your idea that you've come up with to a level even beyond that. So this is where it starts. Um, actually, I guess technically it started four weeks ago, but this is where we are. And how cool is that? I mean, 
I, I wish I'd have known about something like this when I was your age. That's that's how awesome I think this is. Agreed. It is awesome. So um, back to the boring stuff. <laughs> you have one week to put together a first draft. So if your first draft is done sooner than Sunday night, please send it to your mentor whenever it's ready. Um, after your mentor gets that first draft of your paper, they will probably send you back some tips or suggestions, um, whether it's formatting or editing related, or, you know, they, I know that I will check your resources or your site citations for you, make sure that if you include any links that all the links work. So um, make sure you send your papers in within the next week. And then after that, like I said, we'll give you tips to help you perfect that paper and you have to hand it in or you have to register and send in your paper virtually by the fifth. And if at any point between now and then, or then and now, you have questions, you need help, you need a push, you need something, please let us know. Um, next week, I think we will meet on, what is today, the 26th? So next week we'll meet on the 1st. And I think really we'll focus on how your papers are coming along and what we can do to help you and um, my recommendation was that we use most of next Monday's time to um, take the next steps in our paper, whatever that might be. And then the week after that, on the 8th, we will meet once again, and we will have a couple of guest speakers, I think. One who will talk to us about food, um, food security issues in New Jersey, so we can talk about um, what things look like at home. And then a second presenter, we are working on having a judge come in to talk to you about um, your presentation that will take place at the World Food Prize virtual event, which is really just a three minute snapshot of your country, the problem at hand and your proposed solution. So low stakes, still exciting. And uh, we'll talk you through that also. Matt, you looked like you had something to say again. Well, no, and I, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say for the, this will be the first time I think ever that it's going to be virtual. And in point of fact, when we did this last year, this it, the World Food Prize, I think I shared this with all of you already, World Food Prize 2020, the one held on campus, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Abby, that was like the last big hurrah before we found ourselves here. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, it was crazy crazy that that we've been doing this for a year now yeah and and I guess I, I share that only like and I don't know where I'm going with this exactly I've always looked forward to seeing everyone on campus that day because we've done this program before and even before zoom was like the thing everyone was doing this is how we did this program so it was always neat at the end of it to see everyone so um, on the one hand uh, you know I wish that I would see all of you on campus but on the other hand it's so great that we're still able to connect like this and um, I don't think unless you're going to age out because you're too old for the program, I believe you can enter multiple years. So if this was something you enjoyed and you got something out of it and you want to try it again, I believe you can come again next year. Hopefully we could do it in person next year. All right. So that being said, does anybody have any questions at all? Does anybody want help with anything? Anybody want to ask me about any of the resources that I shared? Anything at all? Because if not, we're going to let you go because maybe you can use these extra 11 minutes to take that next step tonight. <laughs> Sidra, do you have anything? Oh, I think. Um, <clears throat> no, I think, you know, I'm really confident that everyone's going to do well with these papers hopefully get them done quick and stuff, you know, ready to go with their ideas. But yeah, I'm really excited to, to see the process. Great. All right, well, you're all free then. <laughs> but again, feel free to reach out. <laughs> Bye everyone, have a good night.